we were still a young province, and we're still known as being cowboys, and that's fine, we are. But uh, I thought we're more than that. It's one of the most uh, important facets of cultural development in any community is the uh, investment that leaders are making, political leaders. If they're really involved and believe that their people have something to say, that their people have something they believe in, and that they're capable of creating beauty comparable to the greatest achievements we've ever had in, in the history of arts, then you have a climate that nourishes that belief and it really flourishes. We believe very strongly that there should be a department of culture and just culture, and there should be a minister of culture. And guess who had the most influence <laughs> in that? She was just keenly down to every, every cell in her body, interested in all the arts, the oncoming arts, the new arts, the traditional arts, and she uh, generated an excitement in others when she talked to you, and she would say, you know, there was this performance last week and we can do better than that and more and double it and triple it and you should have a tour of the rural areas and smaller centers. My mother is a public servant as much as my father. She, she does feel an obligation and a sense of purpose. Everything she's done has been quietly. I mean there's never been headlines about Jean Lahey doing this or Jean Lahey doing that. She just does it uh, without any fanfare at all. As she inspired me and she inspired everybody around her to love the arts. And I think she helped Peter a lot too in embracing ballet. <laughs> she truly educated him into a, a bit of a, a, a renaissance man when it came to uh, music uh, and dance. We, uh, when Peter and I started courting, and we, he courted, the old fashioned word, uh, we were at university and I belonged to the music club. And so I gave solo concerts and I think Peter felt to show his insincerity uh, as far as <laughs> courting <laughs> that he should come to my concerts. I don't think he'd ever been to a concert in his life before. And he sat there with a great big smile on his face. My great grandmother um, was a patron of the arts in the early 1900s in Calgary. Uh, and my great grandfather was a huge supporter of theater in Calgary and built the Grand Theatre in Calgary. The, at the time, it was the largest um, theatre in, in Western Canada. She was also uh, responsible for creating the uh, uh, Young Canadians at the Stampede. He was the chair of the, uh, the Grandstand Committee. This is before he went into politics. I think that shows the imagination that he's had in many ways. Both of them are visionaries, I think. Jeannie in her way with the arts. She was a ballerina originally. She had a great interest in the arts. And uh, she knew that the arts were important to the province of Alberta. Jeannie's deep love and uh, appreciation of art and culture had a huge impact. And Peter, perceptive as he is, recognized that part of the growth of Alberta would not be restricted to oil sands and big cities, that we needed uh, a strong cultural community. Jean had often spoken of the, uh, uh, the, the cultural dimension of our lives and the fact that uh, life is not simply uh, a group of applied engineering projects. It would be very sad if all we did was get up and go to work, compete with each other, uh, and it is a competitive world. They were talking about the cabinet. I think they went away to Jasper for a few days and he was trying to figure out what his first cabinet was and uh, he sort of laid it out for her and she said, well, what about culture? Right yeah. from day one in the speech from the throne in our first government was a minister of culture. It was Horst Schmidt. Alberta was the only province outside of Quebec that had a ministry of culture and a ministry of culture uh, and, and it wasn't a throwaway, it was the real deal. The Premier of Alberta, or any Premier in Canada, is really, to me, the strongest person of any government because of the leadership that is required of him. And to have the support of his wife, 
How much longer can the minister get? The Horst and Jean show was, was one of the great shows of the 70s, you know. Uh, Today, most of the artistic organizations you see in Alberta, opera, ballet, orchestra, museums, are the fruit that have grown from the trees that the Lahids have planted in this province. Friends, what a magnificent facility. What an exciting gala. What a great event. When they held large functions or important events, they always included artists. And um, I made sure artists were performing at that time to showcase what Alberta had. I don't think we ever planned an overseas trip uh, to wherever we were going in Europe or Asia where the culture wasn't a very significant part of our program. It wouldn't have been for her nurturing, especially for her nurturing as far as the ballet is concerned. You were, you're very, very right, it wouldn't be where it is today. She saved his life more than once. Uh, Jean was able to raise support, get people to go, when the ballet was, was really struggling. I would not have the potential of growth I have in this ballet company and the community support, the possibilities of creating what we're creating with Alberta Ballet today if it wasn't for Peter and Jean Law and and what they uh, in, and how they invested in arts and culture when he was premier. It would not be possible. When you had an invitation from the premier's wife to attend a performance, you felt you needed to do that and you were always so grateful. If arts and culture are there to express the deepest aspirations of a people, their dreams, their, their values, it's important that political leaders especially believe in that, that they nourish that, they, they come to performances. You know, the Lougheeds were at every performance in Ottawa during the Alberta scene of Alberta's centennial where they celebrated the artists and the culture of this province in Ottawa. There were standing ovations every concert we went to. That's right. Maybe we led them. <laughs> Very possibly. We've done that before. <laughs> Peter jumped to his feet. <laughs> I think we need to honor people like Peter and Jeannie and Lynn Lester, John and Barbara Cool, because they're people that help the arts survive. Not just the ballet, but the opera, and, you know, the theaters and all of that. They give their support behind them and they say, it's okay to do that. A people that does not have a culture or arts will not be part of history. They will be erased from history, literally. And if you look at history, it's very much the culture and the arts of different uh, continents and different cultures and throughout history that you remember and that you study. We always have to be mindful of those that have come before. They're our inspiration. They're our leaders. They are still leaders. And we are so grateful for having Peter and Jean in our lives and in our province for the Alberta Ballet, for the Banff Center, and for all they have done for the youth in this province. I don't think my parents uh, want to be immortalized in a legacy. Uh, I don't think they care if the 20-year-old dancer knows their name. Their legacy would be that our arts and cultural community is thriving um, and uh, that they can look back uh, and say, we might have had a role uh, in making that happen. Uh, do they want recognition for it? No. Um, they, do they want to see it thrive? Yes.